about this being this morning. Um, it's a real pleasure to be here, and thank you, Rob, and thank you, John, for the introduction and also for the invitation. Uh, John is constantly approaching me about issues, the things he wants to see in Carlisle, the case that he wants to put forward, and he is an effective advocate. And one of the reasons I am here is we, we do have a new round of enterprise zones for which areas have been invited to bid. Uh, we haven't announced, decided where those enterprise zones are going to be. Uh, one of the things I'm doing on my visit, one of the reasons I'm here today, uh, is because John wants to show me the proposal that you have locally here in Carlisle, and he wants to take the opportunity to uh, further bolster that bid by uh, deploying his persuasive powers uh, in person, directly, at site. So I'm looking forward to that visit and having a look. Uh, I can't say what the results uh, of the Enterprise Zone programme are going to be, but whether Carlisle is successful or not, I can say that the case that John has made, that the local authority has made, that the local enterprise partnership has made in particular, uh, is one that has helped to inform central government about the opportunities that exist in Carlisle. So successful or not, as you may be in due course, regarding a, the specific bid that is before us at the moment, uh, what is very clear is that the potential in Carlisle is significant and that there are quite a lot of exciting things happening here. And I think the cases that have been put forward have helped to inform that position. But I'm not here just to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the Northern Powerhouse. I'm here to talk about Cumbria's potential role in it, what we want to see from Cumbria, how Cumbria can be part of what is an exciting project. Uh, John's talked a little bit about the responsibilities I have as a minister. Uh, they do cover the Northern Powerhouse, which is quite a, a sort of cross-departmental interest. Uh, I'm also the Minister for Local Enterprise Partnerships for regional development funds for enterprise zones, um, as well as another, uh, a number of other areas, including building regulations uh, and all sorts of other things, certain aspects of planning. But the thing that has occupied much of my time uh, recently has been the devolution agenda. And I want to talk a little bit about devolution and how it can play a role in building the Northern Powerhouse that I think we all want to see, in unlocking the significant potential. But I also want to talk more broadly about what the Northern Powerhouse is, uh, and perhaps more specifically about what it isn't. So what is the Northern Powerhouse? The Northern Powerhouse is a project which runs as a thread throughout government, across departments, and throughout will continue to run throughout this parliament. Uh, it is the brainchild of the Chancellor, George Osborne. Uh, we saw it starting to come to fruition about a year ago, and it's really been gathering pace since the general election with that result that at least one of you here predicted so clearly uh, when you last met. Uh, it is lots of different things being brought together to unlock the economic potential, the potential for economic growth that we know exists in the north of England. So taking the north of England loosely as the three northern regions, the northeast, where I'm a member of parliament in Teesside, the northwest, and of course Yorkshire and Humber. That area has 15 million people. It has some great cities. It has also, uh, it is true to say, uh, not necessarily grown at the rate which it could have with the right level of support and the right structures in place uh, when we look back over recent generations of economic growth in the UK. If between now and 2030, those areas that I've just spoken of, that Northern England, Northern powerhouse area, grew at the average rate, just the average rate, that the UK as a whole is predicted to grow, that would add an additional, over and above what isn't anticipated, £44 billion in real terms to our GDP. There is very significant potential indeed if we can unlock the potential that exists to drive growth for the benefit of our economy as a whole. And it is important, therefore, given the national uh, economic context, given the financial challenges that government faces, given the reality of the global economy in which we now live, it is important that we look to unlock that potential and realize it, because it has a contribution to make, not just for people who live in the north of England, which is where I am from, uh, but also for the country as a whole, contributing significantly to our place in the world and our economy in the future. So the Northern Powerhouse is an exciting thing to be involved in, because for the first time, certainly that I can remember, it has shifted the debate. I, and I'm sure John has had this experience as well, have spent a number of years in politics with people saying to me that, oh, well, the South gets everything. It's all about the South of England. It's all about London and the capital. For the first time that I have known in the last six months or so, more often it's people from the South coming and complaining to me, well, why is the North getting all this attention? 
why is this shift? Why don't we get as much attention as this northern powerhouse gets uh, in government, in government thinking, in the policies that are being brought together? So what are some of those policies? Well, one of them is transport, and you will have seen a lot of the discussion about transport and the contribution that connectivity can make to growing our economy, to joining up the different economies that exist across the north of England, but which can complement each other and which can work together. That agglomeration, uh, most often talked of as between the great cities of the north, but actually irrelevant too, to the counties, to the towns, to the suburban areas, uh, that bringing together of economies along natural economic lines by uh, enhancing cooperation and investing in transport and enabling that growth to happen. We are going to see £13 billion invested in transport in the north over the course of this parliament, but that is only part of the story. We will actually see, through some of the other things that government is doing, including the new franchises for our rail connectivity, a transformation of connectivity across the north of England. In four or five years' time, by 2019-20, you will see completely different rail service experiences across the north of England to those which we know today. The pace of trains will be gone. The capacity will be up 33%. All trains will be as new or new with Wi-Fi connectivity. This is actually transformational. You might hear talk of the amount of money that is spent in London on Crossrail and how unfair it is that billions are spent. Well, the billions that are spent in London on Crossrail, which is a necessary project to continue the growth in our capital, which is a global city of which we should be proud, the billions that are being spent there will increase capacity by 11%. What we're doing with rail in the north of England over the next four to five years will increase capacity by 33%. On new trains, more connections, more regular connections, connections, connections to Wi-Fi and the internet when you're on those trains. It is going to be transformational for our railway network locally. And we know how overdue that is. We know how much needs to be done. This is going to be one of the most significant steps that government has taken in more than a generation to deliver on that. So some people like to think, well, that's what the Northern Powerhouse then is, is then, isn't it? It's about transport and trains. The answer to that is that that is part of it but it's by no means the whole. So what else is going to be involved in this project? What else can we do to drive growth in the North? Well, another key part of the agenda is the devolution agenda. Uh, we're taking the legislation through Parliament now. It's been through the House of Lords. It's going through the House of Commons. We had our second committee day uh, on the floor of the House of Commons this week, so we've got one more full day of House of Commons debate to go as we do report in the third reading to deliver the cities and local government devolution bill. And the city's local government devolution bill will empower, by Secretary of State Greg Clark, will empower government to transfer powers to local decision makers in a way that has not been done for generations. We have seen the flow of power always going from the regions to the centre, from town halls to Whitehall. We are going to give ourselves the tools to reverse that process. Now, devolution has been debated for many years. Devolution, I think, is recognized by those who follow economic development and follow this area of political discussion. There is general consensus across party political lines that it is a good thing to have decisions made by those who are affected by them most closely. The decisions should be taken at the lowest level of government at which, which it is appropriate to take those decisions. But delivering it is much more challenging than talking about it. I'm from the Northeast, and we saw the referendum in the Northeast on a regional assembly um, all those years ago now, where the people resoundingly said that's not what they wanted. Where we had a government that tried to tell a region what its devolution should be. It should be on this geography, with this structure, with these powers, to dictate to an area what was going to happen with the intention of then rolling that out to every other area in a similar way. Identify devolution to different areas. And it didn't work. People didn't support it, and I understand why. We're taking a different approach. It's more challenging in some ways for the people who want devolution, who recognize what it can do, but it will be more long-lasting because it will mean we're making the right deals with the right areas. So we're recognizing that what Greater Manchester needs to grow its economy is different to what the Tees Valley needs, which is different again to what Cumbria will need. And we're working with each individual area that wants to be part of devolution, and no area will be compelled to sign up to a devolution deal to say what is the geography on which a deal should be done. You know your area, tell us what the geography that makes sense for your economy is. We will work with you to deliver on that geography. And what is the package of powers that you can use 
to drive real change, to grow your economy, to improve life for the communities you represent, to do the things you want to do. And it's not just a shopping list where the people can, the representative delegates can pick the ones that they want. We then challenge every single ask and say, well, why do you want that power? What do you want to achieve? How will it help you grow your local economy, develop your local communities or your local infrastructure? How will it help you make life better for the people that you represent? That is more challenging than going from place to place and dictating a devolution solution. But it also means that we're going to get the right deals for the right geographies in the right areas and the right engagement from the people who are making those deals. And we can see that across the country. We've had um, thir over 30 devolution bids. We've seen a number of deals unveiled. And I've had the direct experience of going to an area that sometimes is skeptical. But when you talk through what can be done, it becomes enthusiastic. And that's across party lines. That's across different geographies. That is because areas will recognize that if we're going to address some of the challenges our economy faces, we need more localized decision making in order to do that. To take an example with the skills agenda, a number of areas are looking to have aspects of skills budgets and control devolved to them because they recognize that a skills program run from London will never be able to meet the different and complex needs that all of the different areas that make up our economy have. So in Teesside and Tees Valley, we have a large chemical process industry, we have a skills gap of a certain demographic, we have particular skills needs that we need to address. In Cumbria, you have huge opportunity with the nuclear industry, you have existing uh, nuclear expertise but a need for skills in the future. You also have a successful and widely uh, appreciated tourist industry that people look to and recognize. You also have lots of small and medium enterprises and some large ones doing lots of innovative often high skilled things. The mix of skills that you might need here will be different to the mix of skills that my local economy needs on Teesside. Again, different to Manchester, different to Yorkshire. And we're recognizing that in the process that's going through. We're working with areas to ensure they have the powers they need to take the decisions that they can best take for the future of their local economies. That's an example of why that bespoke approach, that deal-making approach, rather than dictating of geographies and devolution proposals is the right way to do it. And when we do it, I believe, I'm confident, we will do it in a way that lasts for the long term because that is the approach we're taking. So there's devolution, which I think is very important for building the Northern Powerhouse. Devolution is available to the whole country, but look at where the deals have been announced. Manchester first, ahead of the game. Liverpool now, Sheffield, Tees Valley, North East, West Midlands, Cornwall. You can see the northern areas are some of the most enthusiastic in engaging with this policy and will be the best place to benefit from it. And we are, of course, in discussion with Cumbria about what can be done here as well. So there's devolution, there's transport, but we'd, I don't want the Northern Powerhouse to be narrowly defined either as those two things, because it's already more than that, but also to, to ever be narrowly or restrictively defined as a list of things. So what else is there? Well, there's enterprise zones, and we've talked a little bit about that already and the importance of this new round of enterprise zones and what they can do to drive economic growth. There's also inward investment. And we now have, for the first time, Northern Powerhouse themed trade missions. So whereas before, when we sold Britain around the world, and we do it pretty successfully with the Britain is Great campaign in this country, too many of the people we spoke to, though, would look to London and look to the South and think that that meant investing in the UK. We want people to invest in London and the South, but we've got a lot to offer in the North as well. And for the first time that I've known, we are seeing a series of trade missions specifically targeted at the opportunities that exist across the North of England. Don't underestimate the impact that that has. So it's trade missions as well. It's the skills agenda as well. It's transport infrastructure as well. It's transport for the North, the new body we're setting up to give strategic control of transport to people who best understand the economies that that transport is there to facilitate promote and support. It's all of these things and many more things beside, but it is also a flexible project that will continue to run throughout the course of this government and which can be added to when new opportunities are identified. I have no doubt that areas like Cumbria will be at the forefront of identifying some of those new opportunities. The complex range of policy considerations that exist necessarily around the nuclear industry and the role that Cumbria plays in it, for example, will I'm sure lead 
to new ideas, new innovation, and new proposals that will enable us to drive growth if we have the flexibility to adapt to them. The Northern Powerhouse as a project is about doing that. It's about all those things I've talked about, but also so much more, because it's about changing the mindset of central government so that it sees the North of England rightly as an opportunity and as somewhere with great potential to drive growth and contribute to our economy, rather than as an afterthought, which has too often been the case in the past and throughout history and recent times when we're talking about economic policy. So I think it's exciting. As a North East MP, I'm really excited about what it can mean for my area. I know from the discussions I've had with John and with other MPs uh, from Cumbria that there is excitement, but also Rob recognising your comments, and there was initial concern about whether Cumbria had a role to play. I'm here today, uh, not just because John insisted that I come to the enterprise only once, but also because I want to send that really clear message to the business community here, to people in Cumbria. Uh, you have a huge potential. The investment that is going into this part of the UK over the next couple of decades is going to be vast. You have an incredible skills base, an amazing and di almost uniquely diverse economy. You have a contribution to make to the Northern Powerhouse as a project. Manchester is great, and they're ahead of the game. Some of our great cities of the North have really, really huge potential to contribute to this project. But Cumbria has a key role to play in that too. If we're going to realize what can be realized by doing this, if we're going to achieve the levels of growth we want and need to achieve, places like Cumbria are going to have a key part to play in that. I'm here to reinforce that message, to listen to what you have to say about what you would like to see from us and new ideas that you might have, but also to see for myself, not just the enterprise zone, but what the business community here thinks, wants, believes, the potential that you have, because I want it to be, for no one to be in any doubt that if the Northern Powerhouse is going to work, it's going to take areas like Cumbria with it. You're going to benefit from it, but we can only do that if we work together. So thank you for inviting me. It's a real pleasure to be here, and I'd be very happy to take some questions.